Another really common question that gets asked in the comments of my other videos is about USB connectivity. Do we need USB 3 for a good Oculus Link experience? Can we get away with using USB 2 because it, it does function and it is available? What bandwidth do we need, Carl? Quite a few people in the comments, when I spoke about genuine cables versus aftermarket cables, quite a few people were saying, oh, that, that USB cable you had that only made 900 megabits should work just fine. You know, USB 2 is only 480 megabits and, and that works. So why is 900 not a good experience, you know, versus the three gigabits per second that I was getting with a decent aftermarket cable and with the Oculus Link cable. So that's what we're going to talk about today because the actual bandwidth, as in the amount of data that can be transferred over the USB cable to our Quest 2s, that's not the issue. It's about reliability of connection, smoothness and latency. Now, I tested exactly how much bandwidth is used, both on the genuine Oculus Link cable over USB 3 and using a good quality um, USB cable over USB 2 to see exactly how much of the available bandwidth was being used and then sort of try and help. I spent a few hours playing around, experimenting with the two to be able to put this video together and again give my experiences with it and the figures, the numbers that, that I've measured feed it back to you. Now again, I'm not a, uh, a USB bandwidth expert. This is just what I've managed to tell. I think I was using a program called Advanced Active Advanced USB Monitor. So that's what I was using to monitor the bandwidth being used by the Oculus Quest over Link. Now I maxed everything out as far as settings goes for, for Link. So I went into the Oculus Debug tool and I experimented right up to 500 megabits uh, and then in the Oculus software, I set the resolution to 1.7x. Everything in game was turned up to maximum. So this is the most amount of 90 hertz, of course, as well. This was the most amount of load you could possibly put on Oculus Link to be able to do these experiments. And these are what I found. So my USB 3 port, even though there's a theoretical five gigabits per second bandwidth, once you take away overhead, and real life practical figures, you see about three, 3.2 gigabits per second. My connection was showing bang on three gigabits, so pretty much as you would expect. The USB 2 port, again, theoretical of 480 megabits per second, once you remove the overhead and a real life practical figure, gets you down nearer to about 360 to 370. My USB 2 port measured 364 megabits per second of available, usable bandwidth. So this is what we had on offer. Now. What the Quest actually uses is as follows. My USB 3 connection, totally maxed out, was pulling or and pushing 350 megabits per second. And that was everything maxed out. Maximum quality, maximum refresh rate, maximum bit rate, um, the lot, 350. So nowhere near the available bandwidth of a USB 3 port, absolutely. And not even breaching the realistic bandwidth of USB 2. Because as I said a minute ago, my USB 2 measured 364 megabits per second of available bandwidth. So 350 would just be under that. So why is it when you use USB 2, you get a far worse experience because you do than with USB 3? And why is it obviously that Facebook or Oculus recommend we use USB 3? So. This is what we'll talk about now. The difference between the two protocols, and I've got a little list here of, of sort of technical data, so I'm gonna keep referencing it if it seems a little disjointed. So USB 3 is better. First of all, we have a more stable connection. USB 2 is prone to drop-offs uh, and slightly unstable connections. And obviously when we're talking virtual reality, the last thing we need is an unstable USB connection, whether it disconnects completely and ruins you know, the moment you're in the game or whether it just drops a packet of data here or there and we get stuttering, neither of that is any use. So USB 3 is far more stable. That's just a, you know, a tick for USB 3 straight away. The second thing, and this is now, this is really quite important and slightly confusing, is the speed, not the bandwidth, 
the speed. USB 3 can transfer up to realistic figures, three gigabits per second on my machine, whereas USB 2 was 364. So it's almost 10 times more data in the same one second of time. Now, it doesn't achieve this by sending more data at the same time in like a parallel setup. So like, let's say USB 2 had 10 pipelines and USB 3 had 1,000 pipelines, all sending data at the same time. That would be like a parallel situation. From what I understand, the reason USB 3 can send so much more data in one second, you know, 364 megabits versus 3,000 megabits or three gigabits is because of the speed at which it sends it down the line. It physically sends the data faster. So what this means is a much lower latency. When you're waiting on a frame to be drawn in your quest that's being sent from your PC, if it can get to you 10 times quicker than on a USB 2 connection, you're gonna have 10 times potentially and theoretically less latency. And this applies to you know, moving of your head, moving of your controllers. When, let's say you move your head, your Quest will send information back to your PC to say that you've moved your head, you know, the data from the tracking cameras. And then the PC has to then render whatever frames you happen to have turned your head to look at and send them back to your Quest 2. The faster that can happen, the smoother the experience, the less latency and input lag that you're going to see. So this is the second reason why USB 3 is way preferable to USB 2. So the first reason is simply that it's a more stable, reliable connection. Second reason is it physically sends the data 10 times faster, or in theory, and from my understanding, I'd say I'm no expert, which is going to give us a, a lower latency experience, more of a lag-free experience, and less input delay. So that's really good as well. Now, the third thing that makes USB 3 way better than USB 2 is it supports full du duplex, full duplex, <laughs> full duplex uh, connection, which means it can both send data and receive data at the same time. USB 2 has half duplex, meaning it can transmit data in both directions, but it has to take it in turns. So PC sends data to Quest, Quest receives data, waits, sends data back. PC receives data, waits, sends data back. Full duplex, data transferring simultaneously back and forward. So as you make a movement, the Quest sends that data to your PC, and at the same time, it's receiving frame data from the previous input, you know, we're talking nanoseconds or whatever the hell it might be, milliseconds in actual fact, not nanoseconds. Um, all at the same time, there's no waiting whilst we receive and then we send and we've received so now we'll send and we've received so now we'll send it all happens simultaneously you can see now obviously why usb 3 is way preferable we have a more stable more reliable connection we have a faster connection and a full duplex connection so this is going to reduce again input lag latency and that overall feeling of responsiveness so they're the quite clear and obvious reasons why you want to use USB 3 over USB 2. The other thing is the visual fidelity, the compression. This is the final, is this the final thing? Yeah, this is the final thing. So when you've only got USB 2 available, anything over 125 megabits per second bit rate for the video compression, and I was getting stuttering. Now it only supports what does it support? So what did I see in my testing? Have I got that information here? Yes, so the USB 2 port, I cranked up the bit rate to see just how much you could squeeze out of the USB 2 port. 225 megabits per second was the most it would actually transfer. If I put it any higher than that, there was no additional data sent down the USB line, so it topped off at 225. But anything over 125, and there was stuttering, there was, there was lag, there was, it was twitchy. Now you could even hear it, even the audio was twitching over, over that. So whilst we can squeeze 225 out of a USB 2 port, anything over 125 
was a, a poor experience. Now at 125, if you look for the compression, you can see it really obviously. You can see the banding, you can see the artifacts. It just doesn't look nice. Whereas with USB 3, that topped out at about 350 megabits per second. Um, and this is, in, this is using the Oculus debug tool. So anything over, um, anything over about 250 to 300, to be honest, there was no visual difference. But more importantly, um, you know, it didn't send any more data once you got over 350. So there's no point going any higher than that. But I'll, I'll talk about Oculus debug tool in another video. What we need to know here is that with the USB 3 connection, you could actually send as much as you wanted, ignoring the fact that it caps it off, uh, and it was still smooth the entire time. There was no stuttering, there was no hiccups, there was no input lag, there was no nothing. So with USB 3, you can send physically, you know, as much as Link allows on the highest possible settings without any issues whatsoever. With USB 2, you have to limit your bit rate to 125, um, with everything else, you know, maxed out 1.7x for the resolution, in-game graphics all up high at 90 hertz, um, because any more than 125 and the play experience was horrible. And as I say, at 125, it doesn't look nice. You know, if you go, if you then go USB 3 and, you know, put the bit right up to 250, it's night and day, you know, like at 250, you can't, you almost can't see any compression at all. At 125, it looks crap, to be honest. Now, of course, if you've only got a USB 2 connection, then you're going to have to use it. But I imagine most of us, if we have VR capable PCs, have got a USB 3 connection, whether it's a USB Type C on a graphics card or on a motherboard, or whether it's just a normal, um, you know, USB A uh, shape plug. Pardon me, but but USB 3. So there's no reason to use USB 2, you know, you and, and every reason to use USB 3. And talking about, someone mentioned in the comments on my last video, that my cheap cable that was only doing 900, reporting 900 megabits per second of connectivity speed is still gonna be just fine. And the reality of that is, as we're only using up to 350 megabits per second on USB 3, in theory, it should be fine, but, Again, that is the bandwidth it's using. By only using, by using that cheapo cable, you've slowed the speed of the data transmission down again by almost 75% in actual fact. And that's what you don't want to do. You know, the whole, one of the, the, the second benefit I listed to USB 3 is the speed of transmission to help reduce input lag and reduce latency. By using a cheapy cable that gives you a lower <coughs> connection speed, you're going to perhaps introduce a little bit of input latency and a little bit of delay and a little bit of lag. Uh, I didn't actually get my cheapo cable and test this because I would never advise, there's no reason to use a cheap cable. Like, well, I mean, we're talking like a two pound cable, for example. Like, at least spend your 20 notes or whatever it is to get one of the aftermarket ones that are half decent if you're not going to spend the full money and get a you know, genuine Oculus one. So yeah, I, I didn't actually test with my cheapy two pound uh, USB 2 cable because there's no point no one's ever gonna use one. You know, we can, all, we can all afford to get something slightly better than that. But yeah, in theory, you know, just by slowing the, the speed of transmission down, you're potentially adding in a little bit of delay and latency there, which is the second best reason to use USB 3. First reason, stability. Second reason, speed. Third reason, full duplex. Um, connectivity and then of course the fourth reason is you can run a higher bit rate and have a much better visual experience. So hopefully that has come across clear enough. Again these aren't scripted I've just got a list of information here to the left that I'm trying to put together in my mind in what should be or hopefully should be an easy to understand um, load of waffle. So uh, hopefully it has been easy to understand. Thank you very much for watching. As always any questions stick them in the comments and take it easy.